Oh, Monday, the Audible is on the air, presented by our good friends at Sirius XM. And John, it, Kim Bocamber, John Congemi with you today. And, John, it's a, it's a day to celebrate. It's a day for joy. It's a day to be happy. Not because the Dolphins won, but because Leon's back. Well, Leon is back. Leon is back. and you We know, even got on air on, pretty much on time. Yeah, yeah, but not well, early. I know. Early, got early because of Leon. He's on know? Coach Shula time. Well, he's got to go, he's gotta go get his haircut. He's got to go... You got to go straighten that line every, a little bit. Every week he gets a haircut. Yeah, because it's, cause he got he gets it cut one week, and then the line's so screwed up. You got to go back and try to straighten it out the next week, and it just never it never ends. But anyway, it's good to have Leon back. So you can expect some bumps in the road in the during the show, but we'll we'll <laughs> fight our way through them. Other than that, there's really not much to talk about. Other than the fact that Dolphins come away with a, a huge win, and it, John, that was a you know what? The, it, it, I was I was thinking during the game that. You know, there are certain certain times you go, and, and a lot of times they're night games. You know, you get the yeah. under the lights, and I don't care when you know when you first started playing high school, you played you know youth football, and you're always playing on a Saturday know, afternoon. Saturday. We, played, we used to play Sunday mornings was our day for it, and uh, but then you get to high school, and, you, and your first time you play under the lights, you go, wow, man, this is this pretty is cool. awesome, right? It's pretty yeah. cool. Uh, so they're all they're always special. They're still special to me. But but the atmosphere in that building yesterday, I, I think, was uh, was incredible. Certainly, there were a lot of New England Patriot fans in there, as they always do. They got a big following uh, down here. Uh, but the Dolphins fans, uh, you know, they, they did their part. You know, they, they they were they were loud when they needed to be. Uh, and the atmosphere, John, I thought was just uh, just a pretty spectacular athlete. I mean, a, a, a spectacular atmosphere uh, f- for a great Monday night matchup. You know, it was fun, Bo, in the pregame when the players start running out and then all the New England fans were there really yeah. early. Dolphin fans are still having a lot of fun yeah, in the parking yeah. lot, so more sophisticated group, right? So you end up seeing all the Patriots players come out and hearing the roar. Yeah. And it sounded like a home, home game team. for them. For you know, a home game for the New England Patriots. So in my mind, I'm thinking, wow, this is oh, this isn't going to be good yeah, tonight. Yeah. You know, hopefully the Dolphin fans come out, and they did, and they had every reason to start getting loud because of the way the Miami Dolphins played for four quarters. I thought that was their best performance, yep. without a doubt, from start to finish. You know, there was always going to be some bumps in the road, but consistent execution on offense, yep. on defense, on special teams. Everybody played a role. Uh, you know, eight different guys catching a pass yeah. on offense. Multiple guys getting tackles for loss. Yeah. Pressure on Brady from start to finish. They go 0 for 11 on third down. Yeah. I mean, there was so many good things to get excited about if you were a Miami Dolphin fan. And uh, the script could not have gone any better yeah. for the Dolphins last night. John, the, th- the thing I liked about it, and, and we'll go over all the guys that, and like you said, the, the cast of characters that, that really hel- helped win that football game is pretty deep for the Miami Dolphins. There's certain other guys like, you know, uh, uh, Kenyon Drake and, and, and Xavier and those right. guys, they kind of set themselves apart. But there were a lot of guys that did a lot of good things in that game. But I think as a whole, the one thing I like about – they beat that New England team up. They, they out physical, Yeah, they did. out physical them on special teams. They out physical them on offense. And they out physical them on defense. And I think the defense kind of came out. I think they had a chip on their shoulder. I think they were upset. I think they were upset with Bobby, you know, the thing with Bobby McCain and, and Amendola. That w- w- and went Bobby on. was chirping all night, all, but he, all night. But he said, I'm going to play for four quarters. Yeah. I'm not getting thrown out of this yeah. one. You're going to see me all night. And that was a great challenge. I don't think a, a New England wide receiver caught a pass in the entire yep. first half. Yep. So it was, a, it was a check down. It was a pressure of the pocket. It was exactly yep. how you beat Tom Brady and the New England Patriots. For the first couple times they ran the football, and it was just like a – it was like, run, like running, yeah. It was like running into a brick wall, yeah. and you thought, "Oh, you know what? This this is this is the way these guys need to play," uh, and they kept it going. But New England being New England, you know, it came down to that last uh, came down to that onside. That's why they're where, that's why they're a ten win team, it, no doubt about it. And then that's why they're defending world champions, and that's why they've been there for so long. But, but you know what? I think the Dolphins. I, I think you know this was one of those tests for the Dolphins. Like, hey, look, all right, they they beat you two weeks ago. You know, can you step to the plate and can can you can you go toe to toe with them? And they certainly did that. And I, I think that for everybody that's on this football team right now, that's going to be here next year, you know, that's something that stays in the back of your mind. Yes. Hey, hey, this is this is a blueprint to beat that football team. You got to be physical. You you can't make minute. No, there were, there were a couple couple penalties that kind of brought some plays right. back and and where you wish didn't occur. But for the most part, it's a pretty clean game, and, and they just they just went toe to toe. And beat that football team. You have to play aggressive if you're playing the New England Patriots. Yep. And, and I mean aggressive to a point where you don't want to be able to give away drives or give away yep. plays, even when you get a negative play or a penalty. You still have to come back and, and make sure you manage the game properly in terms of attacking, 
uh, certain zone coverages right. with, with schemes. And I thought that's where the Dolphins did a good job because they got everybody involved. Jakeem Grant on a whip yep. route on, on yep. man-to-man coverage. They haven't seen Jakeem Grant run a route yep. and catch a ball. So it's one of those things where if you get unknown speed, and he blew by, was it Butler? Yeah, I, I think he just Butler, ran yep. right by him because I don't, I'm not sure he even knew how good this guy was right. on the outside because the Dolphins haven't got there in their, in their offense yep. yet. So there was a lot of unknowns, I think, that came out and helped the Dolphins with synergy. You mentioned Drake as a dual threat. He almost had he had over 190 yards yep. in total, total yards. Offense, yep. You know, the offensive line played really well. Yep. They, they kept Jay pretty much, you know, clean. And then when there was pressure, he was able to extend plays, elude the sack, mm-hmm. and keep his eyes downfield and make a throw. So there was a lot of things that happened that hasn't happened yep. for the Dolphins in past weeks. Yeah, it was, it was good stuff. And, and, and the other thing, John, and you can you can speak on this, uh, the, the play calling by Adam Gase. I, I mean, early on in the football game, you know, you had uh, you know you had rollouts, you had you had uh, receivers coming behind the line of yeah. scrimmage, you know, to to to, uh, to make the play um, misdirection. You had Kenyon Drake coming on a deep, you know, deep like a, a reverse, and then you had the play coming back the other way. So a lot of just a lot of play calls out there that that we hadn't seen really this year. Uh, and I, and I, you got to feel like he said, look at the hell with it. We're just going to go out. We're going to open up our playbook, and we're going to see what these guys can do. And I thought it was a. I thought I thought he called maybe the best game we've we've seen him call, John, since uh, since he came here as a Miami Dolphins head coach. Bo, I thought there was a lot of smoke and mirrors to last night. There's yep. a lot yes. of uh, window dressing all over the place, yep. but it was it was going back to getting the ball to the right guys in the right yep. situations. You know, you mentioned. Kenyon Drake going around. How about Juice when he went in motion, then came back blocked, yep. and he came out in the flat, and you dumped him. Yep. You know, you gave him a ten yard cushion to make a move on somebody. Uh, how about you put four guys on one side, and then you go to the man to man coverage Thomas. of Julius Thomas right. on that side, and almost made that hook That's up right. over there. An- another situation where you know everyone's looking at those four guys, and you got this guy over here man to man. Uh, and you took the shot at it. There was a lot of things that we haven't seen, yes. and, and I think that's going to be hard on Buffalo because there's going to be a lot of preparation for things you might not see yes. in, in Buffalo, depending on the weather, depending on what happens with wind and you know whatever the situation yeah. might be this week. But I, I think for New England, I don't want to say they were caught off guard on certain things, yeah. but I hadn't seen it. How would you know yeah, to no, prepare yeah. for, for some of the things that the Miami yeah. Dolphins did last night? Because they hadn't shown it yeah. all year on film. But but you look at New England, and, and, and historically over the years, and, and what's made them so great, is they're fu- so fundamentally sound that, you know, even, even if they haven't seen it before, if you play your rules, it's going to get you to where you need yes. to be. And, 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 and even, even they, they weren't able to do that uh, against the Dolphins last night. And, and, and that... That to me comes from the execution side. You have the play call side, and then you got to go out and execute it. Right. You know, if you can, you can play your fo- your fo- your fundamentals and and follow the play and get to where you're supposed to be. But if they out execute you on that situation, and, and I think that's what the Dolphins did early and often in that football game. And you know what, Bo? There were times where the New England Patriots defense, as you just said, they were in position. Yes. But Kenyon Drake makes a guy miss it behind the line of scrimmage with yep. a spin move, goes back from his left to his right, and goes 40-plus yards down the sideline. Yep. There's no defense for that. Yep. You know, there really isn't. That play was designed to go left. They had a guy right in the hole. Yep. He either makes a miss and goes by him, or he U-turns and goes back around, similar to the run he had last year in Buffalo, yep. I believe. Yeah, and you, so, had Jay, you had Jay Cutler spinning out of a sure sack. A sack. I mean, he was down. I mean, you, you go, oh, man. Uses he, the offhand he, to he, help to himself to hold him on up, the ground. Gets, gets back, back up, gathers himself, completes First the down on yep. third down. Yep, exactly. Right? Yep. It was a great play. But you're right, there, there's, there were plays that were made by the Dolphins that it seems like they haven't been able yes. to make. Yep. Th- those were the plays in the Oakland game or the Tampa Bay game, the, the, the difference between winning or losing. Yep. This was – a close game by score, but for me, I don't think it was no, very close. You, you look at the score, 27-20, you go, man, it was a close. And it certainly came down to the, the onside kick right. in the end. But, but John, I, look, I, I think what, what time it was uh, – what was the score in the first half? It was uh, 27-10. Yeah. Uh, you, you had a 17-point lead. And I don't, know, I don't know about you, but I think me, probably you, and everybody in that building knew the game wasn't no, over. No, no, no. So at look, all. you're sitting there, you know, you got a you got a nice little 17 point lead, you know, three three score Let's game. Put it on cruise control. You know, yeah, you know, but you knew, and 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 I tell you, to the to the credit of this football team, and, and they knew, and to particular on the defensive <laughs> side, they, they weren't giving up on no. anything. It was it was going to be balls to the wall for the the, the entire 60 minutes. Uh, and look, 
it, you know, to me, to me, there, there were so many defining moments in that game. And one of the true defining moments was when they didn't get the touchdown with Amendola mm-hmm. at the end. And they're, they're, on, about the, they're on about the six-inch yeah. yard line, six-inch line, or, you know, under the under a yard. Right. And you're going, well, look, Tom Brady's going to get up there. He's going to sneak it. Touchdown. Boom, touchdown. And, and, and now you've got a dogfight going on. But but they dog they you know they stayed at it they stayed at it got some penalties got a sack the whole thing and and or a holding call and 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 forced them to kick the field goal which really ultimately made a big difference in the ball game in momentum yes because as you said you almost you're almost giving them the touchdown yeah. the ball's inside the one you've seen them go hurry up Brady gets a sneak he gets a push by somebody yeah. in the backfield and now you've got a really tight game yeah. you know with about a minute left to play in, in the football game. Yep. So, uh, yeah, there, there was a situation there where the Dolphins, uh, I think they knew that they had to keep fighting at 27-10. Yep. to 10. They knew that they were going to get the Patriots best. Whether yep. they had played consistently or not yep. on the other side, you knew that they were going to find a way to make a couple plays to make it a challenge well, late you, in the you, game. You, I don't think you, – you couldn't watch that game at 27-10 and not think about the Super Bowl last year. And say, hey, look, if they can come back in the Super Bowl and do that against that's right know, against a team that's that's made it to the Super Bowl, you know, that they can do it against anybody. And, and, and you better strap your seatbelt because this one's not over yet. It's going to be a still a rocky ride. But all in all, John, I think you just you, you just go down the list of guys. Obviously, you talk about Kenyon Drake. Uh, you talk about Xavier Xavier Howard. Not Jordan Phillips. I mean, yeah. this guy's played two great games. Comes up with a sack. Goes out with an ankle. And and for a big guy to go out with an ankle, you know, that that's that's tough to come. Straps it up, comes back right back in. in. Two plays later, he gets a he gets a, pe- a holding penalty called That's against right. him. Down the, then backs him up, that puts him back on the you know on the inside the five yard line. Uh, another big play for a guy that probably you know for probably two years ago wouldn't have got got up and got back in that game. No, and and you you had a question whether he would maybe yeah. back then. And I think you're right. I think he's finally starting to to get mentally and physically more mature yeah. with the people around him. Because, you know, you have the, Adamic and Sue in the first play throw Rex Burkhead into Tom Brady's yeah. lap, basically. Yeah. And I think that set the tone for everybody around him to say, this is going to be a dogfight. Yeah. This is going to be, we are going to try to punish the New England Patriots. Yeah. And, and that running game was non-existent. We mentioned not being able to throw to a wide receiver in yeah. the entire first half. So the defense, and Xavier Howard, how about Xavier? Oh the way he's played the last two games, you mentioned – Phillips, this is a guy that has, in back-to-back games, two interceptions. That's never happened in yeah. Miami Dolphin history. So you you have a guy that is really looking bigger, faster, stronger. The play yeah. he made in center field, he's actually running and picks up the ball at the yeah. last very you know instant and catches it yeah. cleanly and takes it the other way. And you, and you you know it's, you think about him and you think about the interceptions. But he's played against two good receivers. Cooks was Cooks was there. He was there all night on, him. and he was there all night. Yeah. And even the balls he didn't intercept. I mean, he he must have batted down four ball, another four he had balls, one catch for thirty eight yards. Yeah. And yep. I think and that, that was, was at the, the end. That, that was, was the end of the, the game. Yeah. And then the week before, he was on he was on uh, Denver's best receiver. And, they were moving around, and he couldn't get anything no. going. So yeah, it's it's uh, you know it's it's, it's you, you know, I think for the last two weeks we've kind of seen Xavier's confidence just just grow almost before your very eyes. I think so. Uh, and, and now, I mean, he, I think now he's just out there and says, look, line up whoever, line up whoever you want. I, I feel like I can get the job done. Look at Drake. Look at Xavier Howard. Yeah. Look at Devon Gatchow, the way he played yeah. last night. You know, there's there's certain guys that you, st- you start to get a good feeling yeah. about. They're not playing like young players anymore. Yeah. They're finally grown up. They're finally back to where you need them to be. To, to challenge the opposition yep. at every position. And I think on, on offense, you know, you look at Kenyon Drake, you look at the way what he's been able to yep. do. You, you, you're able to not only run the football, but you have a threat of a three down back to be able yep. to toss it to him. He'll make somebody miss and make a big play. Yep. Those explosive plays can happen on any and, area and, of the field yep. with him in the backfield. No doubt. And, and look, offensive line. Uh, you know, you can't say enough about Sam Young and Jesse Davis. Oh, man, that's you know, been really good. Jumping in over there. Good. They played well last week against Denver. Played played well this week, both in, in, in uh, run block, in pass blocking and run that's blocking right. uh, protection. So, I, I mean, yeah, just uh, so, so many good things. So many different How about special things teams, too? The coverage yeah. teams have been good. You know, Parkey's <laughs> been solid. Uh, you, you've seen a lot of good things fall over in yeah. the special teams. Hey, I, it's uh, Every time there's a special teams play, I'm kind of looking through the, out the corner of my eyes, you know, hey, who, who's going to pull something off here? Yeah. And, and the Dolphins, I know the first couple punts, they had, I think for most of the night they left their whole defense, just they lined did. their defense up, standing up, lined them all base. up there and said, hey, yeah, let's, let's, let's stay our base defense in there and see what these guys can do. So, uh, 
yeah, it was uh, it was really really a good night, and you really hope really hope that's a night that just really energizes the, this football team. And and John, for 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 all the fans that were happy, I felt I felt so happy for those guys for those players. Oh, all yeah. they've been through this year, you know, the five game losing streak, the the way they were kind of getting scrutinized and beat down by people, and everyone's talking about them. Get rid of this guy, that guy can't play. Fire everybody, and then all of a sudden here they are. I know they're six and seven, one game under five hundred, but for all intents and purposes, they're right in the middle of the hunt right now. Well, you know, it's exciting when you have three games remaining on your schedule, and you can still say, if we run the table, we've got a pretty good chance yeah. of getting to where we want to be. Now, it's a, it's no small task. You got two road games you have to go to buffalo yep. which is a difficult place to play as well as kansas city yep. and then you get a return trip from the buffalo bills i you know it really holds true with every team in the national football league every college football team every high school team you have to stay within what's happening this week because yep. that's the most important game the dolphins can't get to where they want to go unless they beat the buffalo bills on the road this sunday yeah no doubt you're talking you're uh, listening to the audible uh kimbo camper john congemio sponsored by sirius xm let's go ahead and get to some of the questions here from jason stavros does drake remind you of any great running backs of the past um i don't know there have been so many good running backs i, I would probably go back to he probably reminds me a little more like of a Delvin Williams kind of a guy, mm-hmm. only because he's, you know, he's he's kind of multi-talented. He can he, he's got breakaway speed. He can run tough. He can catch the football. Uh, Tony Nathan maybe, yeah. kind of in that in that yeah. vein of guys. You know, I wouldn't put him in a Ricky Williams. Just different different, different styles, different ways. Different thing. But the thing I was thinking about funny the funny thing about Kenyon Drake is he's never really been a starter. No, he hasn't been a starter since high school, right? All through when he was in when he was in Alabama right. wasn't a starter. Uh, you know he's, he's been he's been doing special run you know special teams and, and he, he's and, been good on it. He's been good at I, it I, as well. Um, and and now you see the guy. And there was a lot of questions coming out of Alabama. Hey, the guy's been a backup. You know, but he's, he's a backup to Heisman Trophy winners and this and that. So right. so you know you but yeah, but you really don't know what he's got. Uh, and, and I think now he's starting to prove to, to everybody at least in these back to back games that you know uh, twenty plus carries. Um, you know, yardage catching the football, all the different things. Proving he's got a, he's a pretty darn pretty darn good all around back uh, that, that's got the ability, like you said earlier, to hit the home run from anywhere on the field. I'm sold, number one. Yeah. But I will say, I hope that Damian Williams yeah. gets back soon. Yeah. Only because if this were to happen week two, week three, week four, yeah. and he had to go through the gauntlet of an NFL yeah. season, you, he can't play he, he, every no, down. No. And and you, I don't know if any back in the no. National Football League can do that. Well, you know, the other, I tell you the other thing. Last night when he went down, he, 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 he well, everybody fell, held their breath. The football, you could almost hear a collective, you know, yeah, a, a gasp in the. In Me, the I know I did. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm checking it out. Is it his knee? Is well, it his hip? Is like his hamstring? When he went down, he kind of grabbed his lower yeah. leg, and you're like, oh, jeez, his knee. And then, and then I was standing next to one of the guys, going, I think he, I think he fell in the football, landed yeah. on football. So. I think uh, we were talking about it. Yeah. I think we might have been exactly. talking about it on the sidelines. Yeah. So I, I look, uh, you know, he. Kenyon Drake's his own guy, but uh, I mean, there have been a lot of great running backs, but I think that's kind of where you go with them. Uh, black man game, can the Dolphins keep this keep this going up in Buffalo? Well, why not? They, I, I don't know why not. They've played two very good games. Their confidence has got to be an all-time high right now. Yeah. And, and, John, you know, it's it's easy to play a ga- another good game when you've just played a good game because you know what it takes to, to win a game like that. Confidence. I, I mean, it, and, and just knowing, you know what? No panic. Everyone in that everyone everyone in that locker room should should be feeling today that we need to give if we can give that kind of effort every and look not that this team hasn't played hard but you know I was thinking about this earlier today, John. You know, big games, big Monday night games, games that may lead you to a championship or a playoff spot, those kind of games, and you get them two or three times a year, especially late in the year. You know, where your focus becomes so narrow, so tight. I remember talking to someone. We were playing a game against someone. We may have been playing when we played the Bears in 85 or something. They said, man, how could you guys hear down there? It was so loud. You know, so you know, at half the time, you can not even know this. You don't even realize yeah, that, that, that going you on. Hear. I remember you, get, you, get, you could get in a stance, and you're kind of so focused, and the crowd's going crazy, and I could hear the guy breathing across right. from me. You know, so, so if, and, and to me, if you can find a way to get that focus every game or as close to it, that that's the consistency that you're looking for because that focus is what keeps you from the penalties, the mental errors, all those types of things. You know, instead of instead of getting your body in front of a guy to tackle him, 
re- reaching your right. arm out, th- those types of things. You know, instead of instead of getting in front of a, a, a guy, if, if you're an offensive lineman and you get called for holding, move your up legs, with them and move, move your, your legs feet. And, yeah. Exactly. You know, those I, types I of think, things. Bo, what you're saying is there's a difference between playing hard and there's a difference between playing smart. Yes. And I think that you can do as much if you're a smart football player. And I'm not saying the Dolphins have played uh, without thinking. I think that when you take a look at the way the Miami Dolphins season has gone, when you have 15 penalties, 9 penalties, 12 penalties, that's when you get to reaching. That's when you get to pulling. That's when you're out of position. Those are the little things. That's the focus that's where, right you there, tune, right. that's where you fine-tune your focus, yep. and you're able to, to be already in the gap or you're yep. already on the uh, outside leverage. Yep. You've already thought yourself through by, by just going through and, and properly doing the things you were doing at practice yep. and transferred in, into a game. Yep. And I think over the last couple of weeks, the Dolphins have been better at that, and, and they've been better at that, I don't want to say, you know, four, five, six games, yep. but they've improved over the last two yep. weeks dramatically. No, no doubt about it. Uh, Vasily Davros, uh, Bo, does it seem that Drake has given the option to open up the playbook with his ability in the passing game? I, I think it's a, I think he's a big part of it. Uh, f- first of all, when you've got a guy for the last couple of weeks that's rushed for over 100 yards, uh, that's catching catching balls for you, like you said, 195 yards in total offense, 194, whatever it was yesterday, and and the week before, you know, he had a couple of runs call, called, called back, back. would have given him almost 180. How about the screen pass last yards. night? Exactly, right? those types of things. So I, I think he does because – because I think this football team has been starving for a running back like that that does allow them to do all the things they were doing. If you remember prior to that, when the Dolphins were really struggling, they couldn't get the running game going. You're losing yards. You're, you know, you're you were first and tw- you're second and twelve. You're second. It and stagnates nine. the play caller. Yes. When you can't, when you have negative plays, yep. it, you cut your playbook in half. You cut your call list, yep. as Adam Gase would say, in half, and now you're limited. Because you don't want to expose your team yep. and, and get in bad situations from second and twelve to, to third and ten, and now you're, you're you know you're trying to throw football down the field where yep. it shouldn't be. Where instead of you know you get a screen play or you make somebody miss in the run game, you've got second and six or five. Yep. Now we're on track. Yep. Now we're, we're ahead of the chains. And, now you can get into your your exotic and, and, looks. And you, and you can run some play action, and it means something. Right. You know if you if, if you're if you're negative fifteen yards in the game. And you're running play action. These guys aren't paying attention to that. And good teams start to overcome those situations. I'm not saying it was perfect last night. Yeah. There were some negative plays. There yeah. were some negative runs. They're at minus fours, minus sixes. But the Dolphins overcame the majority yeah. of those where Tom Brady and the New England Patriots couldn't, could not. Couldn't, couldn't, no. They could not overcome uh, the negativity. They couldn't handle the pressure in the pocket. How many times did you see Brady have to set and then reset and then throw it? throw a ball that wasn't accurate down yeah, the field yeah. you know that was the probably the most uh Confound, wide yeah, high yeah, yeah. low uh i've never i've never, I've never I haven't seen that yeah i've never seen him that inaccurate throwing the football but you talk about overcoming adversity um how about the jar how about the touchdown that gets called back and then you just fight your way back up <clears> and, get it and, again. and get it in again that's you know right. i mean that's that, that's uh that says something about the about this football team and and what they're all about so yeah, I, I think that with Drake, I think he's, I think he's kind of allowed allowed Adam Gaze to, to spread open that offensive playbook and, and do some different different things in there. Uh, I tell you, you talk about Damian Williams. You know, when, when uh, up in New England two weeks ago, they started the they started the game with Damian Williams and Kenyon Drake in the backfield yeah. and and the wideouts, the three wideouts, which is like having five receivers in the field. Yeah, you know, that's what something I'm looking forward to when when uh, when Damian, uh, if he gets healthy. healthy and he's able to come back. Seeing, seeing them doing a How about last night when Jarvis was next to uh, yeah, Jay Cutler? Yeah. There was a couple different formations. You had Kenyon, you had, uh, you had Jakeem back there. Right. You had the Marquise Gray back there. Yep. Uh, you had uh, uh, Juice was yeah, back Juice there. Juice back there, yeah. So a lot of different things. And look, it seemed like every one of them worked when they, I know it. When they did it. Um, Duke Dennis, which Dolphin players do you expect to make the Pro Bowl? Um, well, I hadn't even had much thought, I, I, I to be honest even, with you. I haven't even thought about I'm so, the I'm, I'm getting like Coach Gase, I think. Yeah. I'm so focused on trying to beat yeah, Buffalo. Yeah, exactly. And, and trying to figure out yeah. Yeah, where we're going on an off day yeah. tomorrow and yeah. then getting back to practice. But, I, but I, think the, I think the cast of characters, you well, know, it's Jarvis, Sue. it's in Domican. Is, yeah. uh, you, you know, may, maybe Kenny Stills. Right. Maybe, right. Um, you know, kind of on the, on the outside, maybe hoping that he can get – Get voted in, which would be a nice, nice Rashad uh, Jones. Nice Rashad Jones, no doubt. Yeah, so I think there's, I think it's a, the typical cast of yeah. characters.
characters out there. Um, but, uh, you know, so I, we'll see what happens with that when it comes out. Uh, Rob Pete, uh, why do we go to the zone defense having, having so much uh, success with man-to-man? I think, I think usually a lot of times, John, when you go to, to, to zone, a, a lot of it has to do with we don't want to get beat over the top. I think we, we don't so. want to give up the big play. Well, you need to mix it up as well. Yeah. If you know yeah. you're getting a, a lot of man coverage and you're staying in it, boy, I'm sure going to get to you know White and Lewis and Burk, Burkhart yeah. and, and checkdowns and and just option routes. Yeah. Because that's that's where I think you know that's why the New England Patriots did all that in the beginning of the game because you know the Dolphins were taking away their speed guy and Cooks yeah. on the outside. So why not? The, the, Teams have exposed the Dolphins' linebacking core in coverage. And there's a lot of room to throw the football yeah. in the middle. So why not go to that? So I think you have to mix it up just to keep that stuff underneath uh, to give it a little bit of a question mark of what you're in yep. and what you're not in on a consistent basis. Dolphin Doug asked, John, welcome back. I'm sure Fargo was cold. Oh, How man. How was Fargo? Fargo. Fargo. Fargo I was a, almost a, a your old, metropolis. Your old stomping grounds so, as a <laughs> collegiate athlete. By my freshman year, I went to a small Concordia College in Moorhead, Minnesota. Fargo Moorhead, right across the yeah. river. The Red River, I think, isn't it? I think so. I, think I didn't get to river. see it, yeah, yeah, whatever it was. No, it was frozen. It was frozen. <laughs> yeah, that's right. They probably playing ice hockey on it or, or something like that. <laughs> it was cool. So, funny thing. So, John, you did a game there last week, right? North Dakota State game. Right. I'm walking into the stadium last night. I'm walking behind a guy, and he's wearing a Bison's. He's got a Bison's uh, yeah. sh- shirt. And I go, uh, I go, oh, you know, ND, uh, NDSU guy. He goes, yeah, yeah. He goes, you know, and I go, I, so I said, to, I said to him, I said, yeah, I went to school and I went to Concordia College, and oh yeah, yeah, the, yeah my son to, goes, whatever. Let me buy you a beer. So, so he, so that was, and then later I'm standing on the sideline, probably about 45 minutes before the game starts. You see him see, again? No, I see a guy come walking in with a sweatshirt, Concordia hockey, <laughs> right, and a pair of sweatpants. You, and I walk over and I go, hey, you, you, uh, you talk you him play up? hockey at Concordia? He goes. I'm the hockey coach. No way. He's the hockey coach oh, that's at the great. school I went to. And I'm like, yeah, I went to school there. And he goes, he goes oh, let's take a picture together. And I go, yeah. I go, well, it was a while back. <laughs> <laughs> but I told him to the coach. He goes, yeah, he's still around. I go, well, show the picture to the coach. Oh, so, uh, that's beautiful. You yeah. got to show the picture of the $50 car you bought, too. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> I think it's still under the ice uh, <laughs> under the ice somewhere there. But, uh, yeah, it was, it was a yeah. Fargo-Moorhead day at the, it, that's at great, the stadium we were, yesterday. Just, we were talking about that all week. Yeah. It was five degrees and it was blowing about thirty miles an hour when you were that? there. Yes, but but you were inside. You're playing inside there. Yeah, in the, but in the, what do they call the Fargo Dome? Fargo or? Dome. Yeah. Yes, and in, uh, I think they're nineteen and one in FCS playoff yeah. games in twenty games. It's just remarkable what they've done. That team has done. It's yeah. unbelievable. You know, that, that's and it's a loud place to play. It's only about yep. eighteen thousand people. Yeah. So uh, it, it's a pretty cool environment. You, you were happy to get there, and, and just I was happy more to happy to leave. <laughs> yeah, I was. I was a little bit more ecstatic to get out. Uh, El Chapo Jr., you think Jakeem Grant will take snaps away from Parker? Uh, I think, look, Jakeem certainly showed that he earned. Well, I tell you, he was, man, at last, I, I interviewed him after the game. He came in and we did it. We interviewed him after the game. That was night-night, too, out, if he said, catches that one. I said, Jakeem, man, you almost had two, didn't you? He goes, oh, God. He goes, <laughs> right there. He goes, I, I just couldn't bring it in. I know. it. That was a big play, and it was a really good throw by yeah, Jay Cutler. But it was. I, I, I didn't see I, – I would have seen – in my mind, Jakeem making the, the bomb, the, the more nine so round, than more the so one. than the other one that he caught yeah, he skied for, for a the, touchdown. Yeah, he mean, went up and he, over yeah, the, yeah. the DB and, and took it away from him, yeah. basically. Then had the wherewithal to try to land in bounds, yeah. to try to get his body in, under control to land in bounds. So, yeah, yeah I would have taken – I would have lost money on that yeah, one. It's nice to see – you know, it's nice to see Jakeem in there making plays because it just gives you another option. Uh, he can Speed get – Speed guy that can get, can get, get past open. people, and, and, it, and it gives you another another – uh, other other things you can do with your offense, other things that you can show teams that they've got to get ready for. It's a threat to opposing defenses because you have to respect the speed, and when you do that, you create more space in the defensive yep. secondary and linebacking room. So, so if he might not get the ball on a, on a consistent basis, but just the speed is going to open up somebody else. Yep. So let's get 80. Hey, Bo, those are sweet uniforms. Uh, the reason the sweet Were those sweet uniforms the reason we dominated? I don't know, but, man, they look good. Man, that's the that, best that, uniform that's the in the National man. Football League. That, that is. That, that's the – that's, that is one of the sweet all-time uniforms it, it sh- uh, in the National Football League. It shouldn't be a throwback. League. It should be all the time. Yeah. I well, love I, that I, uniform. You know, I, I would think I'm, – I'm just guessing, but I'm going to say within the next two to two to five years – Going that, back? That is back, yeah. Should I think be. it's back. I hope so. You know. I'm sure all Dolphin fans feel It just the looks same good, way. man. The colors look good. And they, they jump out. I'm sure they jump out on TV and look Absolutely. good. Absolutely. I can't. You know what, Bo? Because growing up watching 
you guys play yeah. and, and, and the guys before you play. I, I always loved watching the Miami Dolphins on white on white at home. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just thought yeah. that was such a crisp, clean look. look yeah. And then, you know, when you go on the road, you mix, you know, you yeah. mix it up with the Aqua. Sometimes you, you wear it for a special game yeah. at home or something well, like we, that. We would always, we would always, whenever it was a night game we played, the, we wore Aqua, aqua jerseys. Aqua, but no, most yeah. of the time the one o'clock. white on white. It always was white on white. Because of the heat. Yeah, no doubt. And no it doubt. looked really good, yeah. too. Uh, Periscope uh, from Courtney, New Jersey, 11. Uh, there have been reports of snow on the forecast in Buffalo. Any fond, I'm going to say, it's, I don't think it's fine memories, Leon. I think it's probably fond memories of playing in the snow. I do have some fine memories, but I'll talk about those at a different time. But fond memories, I have no fond memories ever of being in Buffalo. <laughs> no. What, what? I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't recall playing, I may have played in snow in Buffalo once or twice. Played in the cold a number of times, but not, not a lot of snow up in Buffalo. You know what? I think the wings are overrated too. I do too. You know, to be I've been, quite honest with you. I know they. I know they started in the anchor bar, but they end, they're ending somewhere else yes. because that's not uh, overrated. Uh, although I might go there and check them out because you guys. Are you Are it. you going to? I might. I might. All right. All right. I think that's going to wrap it up, John. Hey, that was fun. Pleasure, hey, it's victory oh, Mondays on and victory Tuesdays in this two, two, in this case. Two weeks is, in a is, row, is two awesome. Two weeks in a row where you wake up on a Monday morning. Well, today, Tuesday. Right. It just feel good. It's going to yeah, be a good nothing week. Nothing hurts anymore. No, nah, it's going to be good. It's going to be a good week. I'm happy. Everything's good. I know, you know? it. Five weeks I got them. Oh, God, what a crappy day. We stink. Yeah, yeah, we're, yeah, we're, yeah what are we going to get through this one? Anyway, I, I might still forget that it's Tuesday. I think I said Monday when I started the show. and, and I didn't. Well, we rolled with it, though. We just rolled with it. No yeah. problem. Everybody knows. So, with Tuesday, we'll be back on Thursday for the next edition of the Audible. Bo, you're and good then, at this. And then we'll, we'll, we'll snap it again on Saturday. Saturday. Right? There See? you go. Bo. Hey, I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer. But, <laughs> but you're in the drawer. But I mean, at least I'm in the drawer. That, that's, all, that's all that counts, no doubt about it. For God, John Kajemi, I'm Kim Bo Camper, and our sponsors, Sirius XM. I'm Kim Bo Camper. We'll see you on uh, Thursday. <laughs>